drunk, you can have him stop. Um, you know, by by um, if you can just type into the chat box. Um, if you type into the chat box, one, can you hear me? Okay, and uh, and and two. How many of you have, if you've been on, um, so put, if you can hear, just type in, I can hear you okay. And two, if you've been on, on a webinar or been in one of my rooms before, please just type in yes or no. Awesome, thank you. So. Um, well, great. A uh, couple of you are back in the room. Brilliant. Nice to have you back here. And a number of you are, are brand new. So, so welcome. So just um, by way of introduction, as Marlon said, my name is Barry Mitchell. Um, I have a, a business called Uncovering Greatness. Um, I've been in sales for over, yeah, what, over 25 years, going on nearly 30 years. And for the past um, decade, I've really specialized in, in teaching in teaching people how to create and earn more money, predominantly through learning how to sell. Um, and have, over the last decade, been able to teach pretty much around the world um, in the area of sales and entrepreneurship. So, you know, I just, I have a belief that sales is the single most important thing that, uh, that you can do in business and, uh, frankly, for me, in life. So, so just on that note, what, what if you wouldn't mind typing in now that I know everyone can type in the chat box, what, um, what do you think sales is? When, when I say the word sales, what, what comes up? If you'll just if you'll type that in and go from there. Okay, good. So results, communication. Meeting a need, growing business, good. Anything else? Okay. Convincing someone of something. Targets, getting money in, opportunities, good. Okay, good. John's been in my room before. And that's really the one that I'm looking for is that sales equals income. So, you know, we have a... Um, we have a, a saying ready that sales equals income and income equals income equals life. And uh, you know, the better the better you sell, the the better you live. So the question is this, how good are you at selling right now? How good how good are you at selling right now? And uh, and when I say selling, what comes up in your mind? You know that word. That word, sales. What does it? Uh, what does it bring up? Because I'm just going to. Uh, um, hopefully, you you can all see this. But you know, typically we look at um, at this. Sales equals income, and income equals life. We have a saying that says, the better you sell, the better you earn, the better you earn, the better you live. So, you know, the better you get at being able to do this thing called sales, the better your life, both your personal life and your business life will, um, will get. So, uh, Rene and Martin say they can't hear a thing. Can the rest of you hear me okay? Okay, good. So, guys, maybe just check if you, you might. Okay, thank you from everybody else. So, Rene and Martins, just uh, just check your speakers, and um, and see what uh, what comes through there. So, so tonight I'm going to talk to you about the most important sale of all. You and you know a lot of people a lot of people say to me, you know. Um, I can, I can sell, but I'm not, but I'm not generating, I'm not generating income. 
So, so what is what is the most important sale of all? Well, pretty simply, I believe the most important sale of all is the sale that you make to yourself. Because if you can't sell yourself on a reason why you can, you'll sell yourself on a reason why you can't. If you can't sell yourself on a reason why you should, you'll sell yourself on a on a reason why you shouldn't. So what is it that you're selling yourself on? You know, I I I really believe that every single day, doesn't matter what we do, we're selling to ourselves. You know, life and business is, is about that consistent sale. So how many of you can connect with what I've just said? Any, any comments on that? As Marlon said, you know, if you have any comments or questions, just, just type them in. But any comments on that statement of mine that the most important sale is the sale you make to yourself? Thank you, Sean. So I'm going to give you a little exercise for 20 or 30 seconds. I want you to think and just put in the very first thing that, that comes up. The very first one or two things that come up in your mind when I ask you to say, what, what are the one or two things right now that you need to sell yourself on? Just, just write it down in front of you. What are the one or two things? that you need to sell yourself on right now. It might be uh, starting, a, starting a new job, it might be starting a new business, it might be, uh, it, yeah, it might be a new relationship. You know, it might be fixing a relationship. But what are the things that you need to sell yourself on right now? So just, just uh, do me a favor, just, just, or do yourself a favor, just write down those two or three things I'm going to give you 20 seconds starting now. Go. Okay, good. Stop. So, would anyone like to share what did you what did you write down? What's the sale that you're going to make to yourself right now? Anyone like to share? What, what did you write down? Okay, good. So starting a new business. Great. Starting cold calls at work. Excellent, Timothy. Thank you. Yeah, just by a show of hands or just uh, an acknowledgement where you're sitting. How many of you don't like that word cold call and realize that that takes a little bit of personal selling? Okay, good. Anyone else? Uh, Dirk? Don't really, so um, yeah, I need to sell myself to believe in myself and not doubt my greatness. Very good. Shawl, financial freedom. Anybody else? Sell myself to make phone calls each day. Very good. Uh, sell myself on a better marketing strategy. Okay, great. What about what about a couple of things outside of business? What about a couple of things outside of business? What do you need to sell yourself on outside of business? Maybe it's fixing a relationship. Ah, Delian put down weight loss. Yeah, how many of you know that? That's a big sale. That's been a sale of mine all my life. Um, Dirk, sell myself on the fact that I can sell. Yeah, look. How many... How many of you uh, how many of you know that if you really get out of out you can sell? How many of you even know that you sold before, but it's that sale to push yourself through the fact that you need to get up and go and do it. Um, improving my presentation skills. Very good. Yeah. How many of you just need to sell yourself on the fact that you need to learn how to stand up in front of people? Okay, great. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing. So so when it comes when it comes to the sale, and I'm just, those of you that have been in the sales explosion or been in any of my rooms, you would have been through this, but repetition is, is, a, is a key thing to learning. So the first key thing is, is the results that we get. So the results that you get come directly from, 
these things <laughs> come directly from, from behaviors. So what are the behaviors that you need in order to create the results you want? So tell me, Liam put down weight loss. So and maybe it's just a topic that, that I connect with. So if I want the right results in, 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 in weight loss, I want to lose weight. What are the behaviors that I need to sell myself on? Because it's, it's pretty simple. The, the results that we get in life come from the behaviors. So, so it doesn't matter what we do. It's when we examine our behaviors, our behaviors are a direct reflection or our results are a direct reflection of how we behave. So in business, in terms of getting out, generating income, what are the behaviors that, uh, that you need and are you clear on that set of behaviors? Now, what determines behaviors? Well, this ultimately is the key sale and it's this thing. Mindset or attitude. So what is your mindset to generating income? What is your mindset to growing your business? What is your mindset towards speaking to people? What is your mindset towards, uh, if I go to some of the, some of the chats, what is your mindset toward, towards presentation skills? You know, do it. What is your mindset towards selling yourself on the fact that you can sell? What is your mindset towards persistence? You know, right now, um, I'm, I, I just want to, you know, congratulate you guys. There's a lot of, when I say guys, everybody on this call, to generalize sort of term, there's, there's a heck of a lot of sport going on. I just want to congratulate you guys for getting on this call because it would have been just as easy to sell yourself on why you're going to watch the cricket. For example, uh, watch England get close to 500. Now nah, I might have got some of you off the call. That's, uh, that's going to be a sale. Or, um, or watch, watch the soccer that you might not have seen so far. But, but what is, you know, what it, what is the sa that sale? What is that, that mindset that you've got to keep, that you've got to keep in check? You know, Dirk says business is my sport. Love it, Dirk. You know, business is a game. Life, life's a game, actually. But, but business, business is a game. Business is a sport. And uh, the, 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 the sport of business is, is all about action. Sales is all about action. So, so when you start shifting your mindset, you start changing your behaviors. When you start changing your behaviors, you start changing your results. And really, what determines our mindset is this. It's, it's our conditioning. It's where do, you, where do you come from? Who did you grow up with? What, uh, what schools did you, did you go to? Every single one of us is conditioned to think in a certain way. You know, when I look at South Africa right now, we're a very conditioned society in, in all areas of our, of our society. Um, people are very, very conditioned. Now, to create different results, we've got to go to the bottom and we've got to start reconditioning ourselves. Now, reconditioning, that's where the sale to ourselves really begins. That, that's where it is because... When you look at the results you want, results really are these things. It's if you ask yourself, what is it that you want to have? So, so what's the result? That's the have. The behavior is where many people, I think, get stuck and they say, what do I need to do? So in sales, I, you know, I get asked a lot in, in, in my sales explosion program and the one-day event that I do um, in, in any sales coaching, one of the first things I often get asked is, what is it that I need to do? Barry, tell me what I need to do to go and generate income. Now, that's, that's fine. You know, we can spend a lot of time talking about what do you need to do. But I've just learned this. I can equip you with all, and essentially, that's what these are. The doing really is, is the skills. I can equip you with all the skills that you need in sales. However, if this doesn't exist, this piece here, which is who do you need to be? If who do you need to be doesn't exist, if, who do you, if, if, if your being is not big enough to go and undertake those skills, you're never going to be able to behave in the way that you need to behave to create the doing that you need in order to have what you need to have. So my belief is in any change, in any sale, sales really starts over here. The most important part is these two pieces over here. It's what is your... 
what is your mindset what is your attitude and what is how are you conditioned towards being able to sell now conditioning comes in essentially comes in two parts one what is your past conditioning what is your past conditioning towards the results that you want to get towards the activities so i'll give you an example my past conditioning towards public speaking and uh, and speaking to tra- strangers was i just don't do that 11 years ago i didn't speak in public I, I very rarely did i limited what i had to do um unfortunately for me at that stage in the career that i had i had to do a bit of speaking but i absolutely hated it because my conditioning and my mindset said i had nothing useful to say now that came from my past so so what is your conditioning around what you need to what you need to create you know so when i look at a comment for example like like from dirk where he says uh you know sell myself that i can sell so what is the conditioning that's been created that creates the doubt that that uh that we're not going to be able to do it so the first part is understanding what is your conditioning where does it come from why do you think the way you think what are those habits and beliefs that are ingrained into your mind the second step is what is the new conditioning that i need to have in order to support the mindset that i need in order to support the skills so in essence how do i need to think what is it that i need to shift so a starting point is acknowledging where you sit acknowledging right up front that this is the way i think and this is why i think the way that i that i think and when you when you acknowledge that and you understand where you sit then um then that gives you the base level to be able to change so when i when i'm looking at and who's sitting on this call um you know, for example and i clive i hope you don't mind i got clive kaplan on on, on the call on this call and clive has been been working with me for for quite some time and one of the very first things that we started working on when i started working with clive is shifting the mindset towards shifting his conditioning from telling people to to shifting that conditioning to asking people now intellectually Clive got it. He knew that you had to ask questions and and he knew the intellectual part. But Clive, um I I don't know if you'd like to make a comment on this or even open your mic and and make a comment. But but if I'm correct what you had to do, you had to recondition your mindset to shift that sail to yourself over a period of time on on creating the ability to subconsciously be able to ask questions when and how you needed it. Would that Does that make sense, Clive? Yeah, absolutely, Barry. I, I fully agree with you. That's one thing that I learned from you, and I'm very aware of it all the time. And I'm still constantly reminding myself because I don't get it right the way I really would like to. Excellent. So, thank you, Clive. Uh, yeah, give him a hand for that. Thank you. For, thank you for coming on. So, so if if you hear what Clive said, I constantly got to keep reminding myself that that's who I need to be. Okay, so that's so intellectually fully understood. So how many times do we slip back into 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 just doing the things that we've always done because conditioning is is so powerful. So the first sale of all is the sale you make to yourself. But in reality, where does it where really does it come from? And um so where it comes from is this thing here. And let me just get rid of this mark and then i'll go here where it comes from up oh, is this thing now those of you that have been on this call before or or in 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 rooms you you'll know this so what is this well simply it's your brain well okay how many of you know people that have a brain like that well it's <laughs> Yeah, how many of you might even be sitting next to someone like that? Some of you are chuckling. I can see Leonard. Leonard, you're sitting by yourself. <laughs> so, uh I I started asking, yeah, I it, empty. I started asking myself that question. So, so that's okay, so it's a picture of your brain, but essentially in, in you know, in very simple terms, your brain's made up of two key parts. One is the conscious part and two is the subconscious 
Now, the most important part is this piece, is the subconscious. Why? Because that holds all our conditioning. That holds everything that has happened to us in the past. That holds all our memories. That holds all our, all our, all our beliefs. Everything that we have experienced in our life, every discussion, every person that we've met is held in our subconscious. So when I look at a brain, I just look at it like this. I go, the conscious is, is it's like a computer. Conscious is like the operating system and the subconscious is like the hard drive and the hard drive really contains the memory. So what sits in our subconscious? All the memories we've had. Now what happens is we get a stimulation, we get some form of stimulus comes in. I don't know. It could be. It could be someone says something. Is you know we hear something, um, we see something, but we get some form of stimulus. What it comes, it comes into our conscious, goes down into our subconscious, and then it creates a reaction. So when I say something like sales is the most important thing or business in business and in life, there'll be various there'll there'll be various responses that come up to that, like. Uh, maybe your response is, I'm not in sales. I don't sell. Salespeople are not honest. I'm an honest person. Or, hey, I love to sell, you know, whatever, whatever it is. But in, in, all parts of our, in all parts of our life, in all parts of our existence, whenever we get some form of stimulation, we'll, we'll create the reaction. We'll react to, uh, to the stimulation coming out of our subconscious. And really what comes up, and for me, this is probably the most important thing that we, that we can learn to sell to because it's this thing here called your little voice. Now, yeah, that little voice, as Blair Singer, my mentor, says, that little voice, that little voice has just come up and said, what little voice? Oh, that one. Look, how many of you have a little voice? How many of you have more than one little voice? Maybe a choir of little voices, a whole lot of little voices singing. Yeah, which little voice? You know, if you are... Uh, in, uh, in, this, in this book here, uh, Rules, Rules of a Night, in, in Rules of a Night, one of the stories is, is about the two wolves. There's two wolves that sit on your shoulder. Which wolf is going to win? Well, simply the one that you feed. So which voice is going to win? Because it's the sale that you make to the voice that allows you to win or lose. So, so I'll say it again. It's the sale that you make to the little voice that allows you to win or lose. When you have to pick up that phone to close some deals, can you sell yourself on a reason why you will or do you sell yourself on a reason why a cup of coffee or Facebook's more important? It comes down to the sale, first of all, to yourself. Once you sell to yourself, then everything else becomes a lot easier. So as Dirk says, it's a big voice. For some of us in some aspects, it's a massive voice. 11 years ago when I had to speak in public, it was a huge voice. It was so big that if I had to do as some form of you know, talk in the industry that I was in, I wouldn't sleep for two or three nights before because I'd be so concerned. That little voice would, would absolutely consume me. I've spent the last decade mastering and learning how to overcome this little voice. And, and the one thing that I've learned is that what stands between me and the results that I want is between this year and this year, above anything else. It's the sale that I make to myself and my little voice. So in, uh, in his book, Little Voice Mastery, um, Blair Singer writes, and I was just looking at, for it up here on my shelf. It's not in, it's in my cupboard. But uh, Blair Singer writes and talks about 21 tools to create success, 20, 21 tools that you can use to learn how to master your little voice. So there's, there's a couple that, that I can give you. One. It's called Celebrate All Wins. So, so Celebrate All Wins. Why is Celebrate All Wins important? Well, pretty simply, when you celebrate all wins, it allows you to get your energy up. When you get your energy up, when you get your energy up, what happens is, um, is when energy goes up, fear goes down. So, you know, some of you would have heard me say this over and over again, and I'll put it up on the screen. And it's this. Highest energy 
wins and highest energy always wins. Now, in the context of sales, in the context of business, in the context of connecting with people, in the context of body language, it's critical that you choose the energy that you need to do what you need to do. So, you know, who do you need to be? In the context of your little voice, when you get your energy level up, the fear goes down. You know, so if you're going to do a bungee jump, that gets your energy up, so your fear goes down. If you're going to jump out of a plane, energy up, fear goes down. So, so the first, a first tool and technique that I can give you is celebrate all wins because it gets your energy up. You know, the, the art of being able to celebrate wins. We even say this, if, if you don't have a win, find somebody else's win. If you can't find anyone else's win, make up a flipping win. Make up a flipping win, get excited about it, celebrate it and share it with somebody else. But celebrate your wins. So, you know, it, whenever I'm coaching, whenever I'm coaching people or whenever, for example, my, my wife does a lot of coaching around, around mindset and helping people really reprocess their, their mind and their little voice. Whenever we do it, the one thing that we get, the people that we're working with every single day is to post uh, their daily wins. At the end of the day, what were your wins for the for the day? Find a win, celebrate it, and get and get excited about it. It pushes your energy up. When your energy goes up, your fear goes down. So I'll give you an example. If you you know someone said uh, uh, I need to you know sell to myself on why I need to pick up the phone or sell to myself on um, yeah delay and sell to myself on making uh, making phone calls each day. Someone else said sell to myself on cold calls. You know just uh, starting cold calls at work, so that that little voice comes up. So if you want to get if you want to get out of that, well, what you do is you first of all get your energy up, then you pick up the phone. Pick up the phone. Doesn't matter how the phone call goes. If you if you stutter, stumble, put it back down again. Find a win. The win was you had the guts to dial the number, and celebrate the win. First of all, you get your energy up, celebrate the win, get excited about it. So always find a win. Find a win first. Then go and look at what didn't work. Okay, That'll create, start creating the right energy and the right positivity that starts flowing uh, into your mind. Okay, does that, does that make, is that making sense to everybody? So you start, you start creating that energy that you need. That starts, starts shifting your, your mindset. Okay, so find a win. Because most people's natural tendency is to go to what? Well, yeah, you probably said it, is to beat yourself up about what I didn't do right. Why? Well, pretty simple, that's conditioning. Yeah, those of you that know me, that's conditioning from school. School teaches you that. If you make mistakes, you're wrong. If you don't understand something, you're wrong. If you, didn't, if, if you couldn't give the answer, you're wrong. And in some cases, for some of us at school, it, as even as far as being stupid. So what happens is we create this little voice and what and what we, we don't want to do things just in case we're wrong or just in case we fail. Or, so you've got to find the win. You find the win. When you find the win, you celebrate the win, you get excited. The other thing about celebrating the win is you can anchor it, which means next time you're going to pick up the phone, you take yourself back to the position where you were going to pick up the phone you find that feeling of celebrating. Man, I had the guts to pick up the phone. Boom, that allows you to do it again. And then it's a process of just work through the process and eventually you just pick up the phone anytime you want. So first little voice technique, celebrate wins. Celebrate all wins. Find a win to celebrate. Just before I move on, any quest on what, we've been, what I've been talking on so far? Okay, great. Thanks. So, yeah, so Dirk, your comment is don't celebrate for too long. Yeah, you know, so uh, what, I, what I experience with many people is they don't celebrate, sadly, they don't celebrate at all. You know, if, if it's not done perfectly or it's not done right or we don't get the result that we expected, then we stop celebrating. So, you know, I think my point is find a win in, in, in everything that you can. Okay, so celebrate all wins. The second technique I've just 
I've been through at the same time, which is highest energy wins. When your energy goes up, your fear goes down. Okay, so I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you a third technique, and it's it's called debriefing. So this I believe is very powerful in terms of helping you unpack your your little voice, helping you unpack what happened. So the debrief technique pretty simply goes like this. The first question, so you're gonna ask yourself a series of questions. So, you're gonna ask yourself a series of questions. So the first question is gonna be, what happened? So let's say you're gonna make some cold calls. So you pick up the phone, doesn't go that well, you uh, you stuttered and stumbled, so you put the phone down. Okay, good. So when you finish the call, you just ask yourself, okay, what happened? Okay, so what happened is I picked up the phone and then I started and stumbled. Okay, good. And then you ask this question, what, what worked? Okay, what worked? Go for the positive side first. Okay, what worked? Okay, what worked is I had the guts to pick up the phone. Now, when you've worked out what worked, what are you gonna do? Pretty quickly, what are you gonna do? Anyone type it in. Do you know what worked? You found, what have you just found? You've, uh, very good, thank you Abdullah, thank you Rian, yeah, Dillian, yes, you found the win, so you celebrate, short, like Dirk says, but so short to the point, yeah, good, okay, I had the guts, excellent, well done, okay, good, then you're gonna ask this question, which is, what did not work, okay, so what didn't work? You just ask yourself what didn't work, okay? So what didn't work is I started and stumbled. Okay, so uh, when I went to read my script, my little voice got in the way. Okay, good, okay. So, okay, so that didn't work and then I put the phone down. Okay, okay, cool, great. So did you learn something? Well, if you learned something, you're gonna do what? You're gonna celebrate because it's a win. So you find the win, okay, cool. I got a good learning out of that, great. That's the most powerful piece. And you're gonna ask this, what did, what did I learn? You're gonna ask that question, what did I learn? So when you ask the question, what did I learn, you go through it. Well, I learned I can pick up the phone. I learned I need to practice a little bit. Okay, good. And then you're gonna ask this. What can I do better next? Okay, good. So maybe one of the things is look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend five minutes and I'm going to practice my pitch. Okay, good. So I'm going to practice my pitch. So when I pick up the phone, so now you're going to pretend that you're picking up the phone. Okay, good. And you're going to do some. Hi, this is Barry Mitchell. Hi, John. Nice to speak to you. Uh, John, by way of introduction, you're going to role play and go through the process. Okay. One of the ways to change your, to recondition your brain is through, through role play. Role play and practice. Why? Because it increases your level of confidence. The more you role play, the more you practice, the better you become at doing it, the better and higher your level of confidence comes. Starts getting through that little voice. I know how to do this. I know how to do this. So maybe what you decide is I'm going to do a little bit of role play, go through it, do it again. Right. Then you're going to get your energy up. Right. I'm ready to fight. Get your energy up. Why? Because fear goes down. On the count of three, what am I going to do? I'm going to phone. What am I going to do? I'm going to phone. Am I ready? Yes, I'm ready. Go. Pick up the phone. Boom. Now, some of you might be sitting going, hey, this is a bit wacky. The reality is this. When you get your energy up, so when I run phone sessions in organizations, so the one of the things that I do is, is um, I'll go in and I'll work with sales teams and I, and I drive them into, into getting on the phone and creating appointments and making sales. Those of you that have been in the sales explosion program, you know, there's an uh, there's a, a, a exercise I do in the sales explosion program, but pretty simply what we do is we get the energy up so the fear goes down so people take action and we operate at a high level for a very compressed period of time. So you get that up, get your energy up, pick the phone, go. Once you've made the call, however it comes out, whatever the result is, you go back, you debrief, you work through it. What happens is you start... You start uh, reconditioning your brain so that uh, so that you can start creating 
results that you need. So, folks, the first and most important sale of all is the sale you make to yourself. If you can't sell to you, you'll struggle to, uh, to sell to anybody else. If you can't sell to you, you'll struggle to sell to anybody yeah. else. So, so what are you doing to sell you to you? Any, any, any questions, any questions or comments? Yeah. Type in any questions or comments that you have. Some of you have got, have got your, uh, your, your on unmuted. If you wouldn't mind just muting yourself. So, yeah, Abdullah, what happens is, um, is that's a great question. Do you debrief after, after every call? What happens is, is, it's like anything. It becomes, it starts off, but you, you've got to do it consciously. So I'd say it's a conscious process of, okay, um, consciously debrief. You know, for example, I've been doing a debrief for so long. I am constantly debriefing myself. Okay, what's working? What's not working? Okay, uh, what am I learning? Okay, what am I going to tweak? What am I going to change? So after a period of time, it becomes a technique and a tool that you're using in your mind all the time to consistently change. Hey, good, that worked. That didn't work. What did I learn? If, if that makes sense. But yes, if you... So when, when, I, when I run a team of people, what I'll do is, is we'll make sort of 10, 15 phone calls and then we'll do a debrief. What's working? What are you learning? Good. Right, have a break. Stretch your legs, you know, have a cup of coffee, five minutes, go, come back, do it again. Debrief after, before and after each session so that we know what we're going to do and what we're going to do better. But to start off with, you know, if, you, if you're brand new making phone calls, yeah, debrief after every call. And what happened? Because when you celebrate that win and you find what works, it increases your confidence to do the, to do the next thing. Great question. Thank you. So, Delian, realize the importance to celebrate the win after what worked and what didn't work, drives up the energy to constantly debrief as well. Yeah, you know, so I know Delian very well. And uh, and look, some of you, some of you are, are, are really worried about not doing it right. So what happens is we get, because you, you're worried about not doing it right, you get stuck in what you've done wrong. And sometimes it's very hard to go find the things that you've done right because You've got to learn to tell that little voice, stop, shut up. I'm not interested in what I didn't do wrong. You've got to find what I did right, first of all. Does, does that make sense, Dilev? Yeah, Dilev, Great. Any, any other questions around, around little voice and the sale to yourself? So highest energy wins, that's for sure. I gather energy and choose my energy. Okay, good. Yeah. So are you any energy is probably the most important thing that you have access to in 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 business and in life. And can you control the energy that you have? Now, when I talk about energy, I'm not always talking about standing on the chair, being obnoxious. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about an energy where you have a level of confidence with it where you're in control of who you are and who you are, importantly, who you are being. So I'll go back to the same thing, to the first thing I spoke about, is it's your being. The sale comes from who do you need to be. So who do you need to be in order to do what you need to do to have what you need to have? But in order to change that mindset, you've got to understand what is it that I need to do in order to be rather than what is it that I need to do in order to in order to have so when you when you shift in that in that process it's it's all comes down to this it all comes down to the being now the energy that you have look how many of you have ever been frightened or scared about something when your energy starts dipping what happens that little voice grows and grows and grows doesn't it you know so the more scared you get the more fear the bigger this flipping little voice gets how many of you have 
being scared of something and you're worried about it for week after week after week. And when the days come, it's like, what the heck was I worried about? Because we create all these little things in our head. So part of little voice mastery is learning to, to say to your little voice, stop. Okay, just stop. One tick. You know, first thing is you've got to acknowledge that it's there. Stop. Okay, thank you. Don't need you right now. Boom. And that takes practice. It takes time. But once you get through it, second part is, you know, around energy. Is when, when you learn how to manage your energy, you learn how to turn on the energy that you need when you need it in order to create the results that you, that you need to create. So, great. Great question. Thank you. So, anyone else? Okay, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna open up the line for a couple of minutes. Just um, if there's any questions that anyone would like to to pose, just to, around sales in general. You know, what are some of the things that are that are worrying you? What are some of the things that are getting you? What are some questions that uh, that you'd like answered? I'll if you know if I get a couple, I'll, I'll pick a just pick a couple quickly that I can um, that uh, that I can answer for you, and then um, and then. Let's see where we go from there. So just either type in questions or if you want, um, put up your hand in the little box and I'll, you can unmute yourself when I ask you to and then, um, and then just, just give me your question. So Okay, great, Dirk. Any suggestions on subliminal type of rendering techniques, i.e., meditation CDs, videos? Dirk, that's a that's a great that's a great question. So, um, yeah, I you know we use uh, we use a couple of things. Um, in the last uh, two years, I've been been very blessed to to um, have or be working directly with with Robert Kiyosaki, and he introduced uh, he introduced me to to a book called Miracle Morning. A um, really, really great book. Uh, very, very powerful. So, um, so you know, I, for me, I've, I've been using it for, for a, a while now and using the, the process that the guy, guy goes through. And, and like most things, it's nothing that I didn't know and it's probably nothing that you don't know. He just packages it in a really, really powerful way. Um, and uh, basically everyone in our team uh, uses Miracle Morning, so so um, I would, yeah, I would. That's one thing I'd recommend is is grab the book Miracle Morning. You can you can download it. Just go www.miraclemorning.com um, and um, and read that. I, I I think you get a lot of value out of that. And then um, I use a uh, um, again um, a program that Robert uh, introduced me to, and and part of. Uh, my process of being on the team is is we have to use it and we use it and it comes from a uh, comes from a, a group called or it's it's called Holosync. So um, I'm just gonna I'll type it in here for you. It's called Holosync and it's from an organization called um, it, it, you, you can download it www.centerpoint centerpoint dot com. Um, and uh, and it's um, it's uh, a guy called Bill Harris. It's twenty odd years of, of study, um, and it's around meditation. Um, and I've again, there's many meditation tools and techniques. We just found that this has worked really well for us. And uh, and personally, I've I've uh, I've found that it, it works in incredibly well. So yeah, I would um, so try those and see how see how those work for you. Okay, good. Abdullah says. Um, I chat, I does, does that answer that, Dirk? Um, oh, uh, bada, bada, boom. There we go, Dirk. Holosync, and it helps if you press enter, and, uh, and then it seems to go. So, Abdullah says, I have challenged negotiating my commissions. Abdullah, negotiating commissions, closing a sale, 
is all comes down to sales. Whether, whether you're negotiating for a job, whether you're negotiating commissions, whether you're closing a client on a deal, whether you're closing your kids on why they need to go to bed, whether you're closing yourself on why you're going to go to the gym in the morning or not, um, you, need to, uh, you need to be able to sell. So the side, of, the side of people not keeping their end of the bargain, that comes down to agreements. How clear are you? in terms of the agreement that you have and um, and are you clear on the agreement? So, you know, a lot of times people will say, but I know that that's the agreement that I have. Well, how many of you know that you know what you know, but when you go and sit down with somebody, they say, but yeah, I understand, but that's not what I, that's not what I know. But I know is something different. So, so just, you know, part of sales is, is Verification, a tool and technique is learn how to verify. When you verify, you create clarity uh, in your mind and in their mind around exactly what the agreement is. So take a little bit more time to answer that agreement. Hopefully that helps you. Um, Joel, our sales cycle is sometimes long. Is there a danger of losing the deal and pushing too hard? And is there any signs to back off? Should one keep following up or leave them? Okay. For me, the root of life is this, never stop going back, Sean, you keep going. The question is, are you going back and being a pain, or are you going back and adding value? So, if uh, someone's, on, someone's on unmute, please could I ask you to mute? Thanks. Thank you. Um, so, Sean, you know, the studies that they've done is uh, there was a study done in the States, I think in 2000 or 2015, 14 or 15. And what they did is they, um, they, they, they took thousands of sales guys, they, they looked at where they were at, and they, what they found basically is that um, about 12% of all the sales guys they interviewed never stopped going back. And those 12% accounted for about 80% of all the business that was generated. So never stop going back. A no is never a no. It just means that it might not be the client's right time or timing. But you've got to keep putting in the time. Timing is essential. And, and remember this. A sale will happen when it's in the client's timing, not yours. You can do things that can speed the timing up, but it's in their timing. You know, if you're a runner, you'll only buy a new pair of running shoes when the timing is right for you. Now, the client could... A supplier could speed it up because they could have a special or so there's a number of things that you can do. But you just, you know, if you keep your pipeline full and you're speaking to a lot of people and you keep going back and you're doing a lot of work, you'll meet clients whose timing is right. Just don't be a pain. Don't be a pest. Don't be someone that people don't want you coming around. You keep going back. You keep adding value. You keep building a relationship. Drian says, persistent pays. A friend of mine called Lori Radnask wrote a really great book called Persistence Pays. She bought a massive, she built a massive uh, Mary Kay, Mary Kay business in, uh, in, in, in Canada and the US, a network marketing business. And her whole thing was persistence, persistence. But it's persistence. Don't be persistent, but don't be a pain in the butt. You know, so it's to respect where people are. Again, when you respect where people are, don't just roll over and roll over and die. So part of the tools and techniques, learning how to handle objections, learning how to connect with people, really is once you once you get good at that, um, that'll create a lot of results for you. Uh, Dirk, what CRM system do you use or would you suggest? Um, Dirk, I, I personally, I've never been a huge person on CRM systems. Um, I, use, I use a very simple system called PipeDrive. Um, my very simple CRM system is uh, is a series of flip charts that sit on my office wall, and uh, what I do is is I am regularly filling in my funnel because I also believe this is if I can see it, I can action it. It's at the front of my mind. So I, you know, when I work with with any clients, the first thing I always do before we ever go for CRM systems is we put it up on the wall so that I can see the pipeline, see the funnel and see who I should be dealing with. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, in terms of our business, we use uh, uh, a platform called Infusionsoft, 
that's connecting with people. That's that's pretty powerful. Um, but in terms of sales, in terms of sales, Pipe Drive, it's a great system. It's very easy to use, very simple. That's probably why I use it. But again, I'll, I'll go back. If you could see it on the wall um, and not knowing what your business is, but you know, if you have a small to medium sized business, if you're an entrepreneur, and you're out selling, you got some deals, you my suggestion is write those deals, put them on a flip chart, stick them on the wall, look at them every day, scratch them up, write on them, decide what the next step you're going to do, and uh, and and use them and use them from there. So great question, thank you. So folks, um, I just want to ask you: Have you got have you got value out of tonight? You got some valuable learning? If you just type yes or no. Great, thank you. So, so we do this. We do this every Tuesday. The other thing I'd like to ask you is, would you mind? You know, so it's it's all very well for me to pick some topics, but um, around sales, business, entrepreneurship, um, what what are some things that you like to learn that possibly uh, I could we can teach or I can teach when we when we put it on the webinar? But some of you wouldn't mind. You know, what are the things that are holding you back when it comes to sales? When it's coming it comes to income generation, when it comes to when it comes to building building your business, if you, you just want to quickly type in what are what are some of the things that we can help you with? Um, maybe uh, I, that'll okay. Good. So Clive, you got it. Jump closing. Okay. Good. So just how many of you think that learning how to close would would be a would be something powerful to learn? Okay. So so I'll do a I'll do a webinar based on closing, um, marketing techniques and building sales funnels based on various industries, okay? We'll definitely do one on funnels. You can, you can probably uh, download a, uh, at least one or two webinars that I've done before on numbers and funnels um, off the website, that'll, that'll probably help you. Um, opening, okay, good. So how to connect with people right from the beginning. That's a great, that's a great topic, thank you. So opening, and that would, that would probably come into prospecting and generating leads, okay, good. That'll be great. Um, okay, profiling, generating leads. Okay, good. Thank you, folks. That that um, that that gives gives me some really really good good uh, good ideas. Website link to previous webinar. Okay, good. So you just go to www.uncoveringgreatness.com. So it's www.uncoveringgreatness.com. So Dirk, just um. For your and anyone else's interest, if uh, if you wanna, if you wanna, I, I'm running a one day event in in, in a few weeks time. I'm just gonna um, just um, it's uh, it's around building funnels and creating the right numbers. So it's a it's a one day it's a one day event. Mari, would you would you just mind uh, typing in the box to everybody um, when the one day event is, what the date is? Um, and um, and it's 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 not an expensive event. I think it's it's nine hundred ninety five rand. It's a it's a it's a full day, and in that I'll I, I'll really just unpack um, how we look at a funnel, what a funnel is, and at the end of the day, you will walk. There we go. It's a one day sales strategy event. Um, it's on the seventeenth of July, and you'll you'll walk away from that. Um, you'll walk away from that with a. With the funnel that you can on a on a uh, flip chart paper, you can stick it on your wall and you can look, and that'll have the key numbers. And uh, thanks, Claudio. That that'll that'll have the key numbers, metrics that you need to measure, and the activities that you need to do, and, and it'll create clarity. I personally believe that um, that sometimes people get way too bogged down in uh, in 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 strategy and trying to do this, and the simpler it is. The easier you'll get it. So, so some of you might be might be interested in the one day sales event. Um, Mari's just put up there. You can book if you'd like to come. Um, the other thing is is um, on. I have uh, a couple of of uh, uh, preview events. I call them preview events, but it's a sales and leadership uh, events that that are coming up. Mari's going to put in the uh, put in the links for for those free events. Um, if you got value out of tonight, uh, it's uh, it's a two and a half hour to three hour session. Um, come along, 
and uh, and and yeah, I teach you on various different things around around sales. It'll it'll give you an idea to uh, to me, uh, and um, and yeah, if you've done it before, come back again. It's a refresher. If if you haven't, come spend uh, come spend a couple of hours with us, and um, and I, I I think you'll get a lot of value out of it. It'll also give you an idea to to how I teach and and, and what happens in in my room. So you just have a look there. It's uh, Bedford View, 29th of June, uh, Centurion, 6th of July, and Bryanston, the Bryanston Country Club, on the 3rd of August. So if you go onto those links, book they for free, and uh, and and it would be uh, yeah great having you in the room. Come and come and join us. Come and spend uh, spend a morning with us. And then the last thing is just to let you know, um, those of you that that are, are interested, right at, in October, um, I have an event called the Sales and Leadership Mastery Program. It's a program that, uh, that I've been teaching in South Africa for close on 10 years. Uh, it was developed by Blair Singer. Those of you who know Blair, you'll know that he's uh, probably, he is Robert's, uh, Robert Kiyosaki's longest standing sort of uh, rich dad advisor, and he's very close friends to Robert. And I've been working with Blair for over, over a decade, and uh, Blair, Developed a program called. It originally, it was called Sales Explosion, and we've changed it to the Sales and Leadership Mastery Program because sales really is is a, is a core function of, of leadership, and great leaders know how to sell. So in October, we have uh, we have a, uh, our third public. I do three public programs a year. Um, it's a program that that in the last two years I've been able to. I've taught in Switzerland, the U.S., um, in uh, in Kenya, in Zim, uh, in Australia. In India, so it really it's a really great program. There's there's a, a number of you um, on the program that have that have done it, and um, yes, Claudia, we'll send you send you all an email um, with um, with uh, with all the details. Maybe if I could suggest if uh, if if you just um, we've got all your email addresses, so we'll send you we'll send you all the all the details. Um, but it's coming up in October. It's a it's a it's a two and a half day event, and uh, and it's highly intensive. And what what I what I can promise you, it's a program that that you will definitely learn how to make money. I've just done a program in Kenya. We did an exercise in the room in twelve minutes with eighty five people. We closed or did ninety million rand worth of sales, over a million rand per person. So um, it, it it it's it's not only about the art of being able to sell to generate income. It's the art of being able to sell to yourself. And uh, so it's both a leadership event and, and a sales event. So so that's coming up in October. So Mari will send you all the details. Folks, I just want to uh, thank you. Um, look forward to seeing you in, uh, in one of our rooms coming up soon. And uh, we'll be back again next Tuesday. So uh, another sales webinar. My goal is to, is to do these as uh, pretty much every every um, every Tuesday, and some of you are waiting for. I'm doing another web webinar in 15 minutes' time, which is which is on uh, which is on money and really um, some of the stuff that I'm working with Robert Kiyosaki on. Some of the stuff that I've learned from him and the rest of our advisors around tonight's topic really is where um, where what should I do or where should I put my money. So I want to thank you guys. Thank you very much for coming on. Really, uh, really looking forward to uh, to working with you in the future. Great to see uh, some of you, a lot of you back on again. Um, many of you been in the room. So have a blessed evening. Look forward to seeing you soon. See you at one of the preview events or back on the webinar. Um, and uh, go out. Remember, sales equals income. Income equals life. The better you sell, the better you earn. It is in your hands not the exchange rate, not the economy. It's in your hands. And, uh, and what can you do to create the results you want? So thank you very much. Have a great evening. Thank you to Marlon and Mari for hosting us. As always, thank you for Marlon for getting everyone going. And Marlon, back to you. Thanks. Thanks, Barry. Very, very informative and, and, and refreshing as always to to learn so if anybody wants to join in on the next webinar you would use the exact same um, meeting id as as you used to get into this one we will start that one promptly at at um 
quarter past eight. So thank you very much and have a good evening. Oh yeah, and we the the, the link will be sent out probably within within the next uh, by by tomorrow. You'll get the links for for this recording, so you'll be able to go back on it if you perhaps feel you missed anything. All right, have a good evening. <laughs>